welcome to samvad today i am at cochin shipyard in my behind this is isc indigenous aircraft carrier is getting ready to hand over to indian navy today i have a special guest with me sri madhu s nayar he is the chairman of cochin shipyard It was a major uh, challenge and opportunity uh, before Cochin Shipyard. Uh, how do you see after this completion of uh, this project? See, the opportunities that have been presented by IAC. It's actually perfected a lot of systems in the company. It has elevated the thinking and the capabilities to a different level. Right. To touch a few of uh, these points, like uh, about design and engineering capabilities, this has been this has been stepped up by a significant level. In fact. one of the core areas for any high tech vessel is uh, extreme strength on your design and engineering which is not visible outside but only if you have that design and engineering strength you can actually move forward so that has been it's it's at a very high level because the you, you see this mammoth can you uh, give the specification details see this, this vessel is about 260 meter long and uh, uh, it 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 displays us. Uh, the naval ship is always called by displays. It displays us about slightly upwards of forty thousand tons. Now, uh, from a power point of view, it's propelled by four gas turbines, which each of which is twenty-four thousand megawatt, twenty-four thousand kilowatt each. Then there's an electrical power plant on the ship, which is eight di- uh, diesel alternators, each generating about three thousand kilowatt. So that's about twenty-four megawatt. Technically, can power half the city of Cochin. You know that kind of power, mm. and all the figures on the ship. They, those are interesting. The kilometers of piping, about two thousand four hundred kilometers of electrical cables. So the significance is actually it's a, it's almost a eighteen-story building. About sixteen hundred people can live comfortably. There's a full-fledged hospital uh, on board with full uh, operation theater, scan systems, and other things. so what happens when you uh, take up such a large system is you can you can build ships but when you integrate systems and the systems must talk to each other that's what we call network centric systems so the confidence of handling large scale network centric systems that's extremely high today and and we can we can we can make sure that any complicated system which needs large scale integration because these days you know like you moved into the era of for example on this vessel we have a integrated platform management system what we would otherwise called a fly by wire uh, system so it can all be controlled from consoles and from remote locations so these skills have been acquired and this can be taken across and this is what the world needs for new generation vessels uh, you call it as iis indigenous aircraft right, carrier right. uh, the word indigenous is all is actually really exciting for all of us yeah. uh, how it happened see they, this thought process again the credit must go to the thought process in the indian navy because see uh, you are aware that india had an aircraft carrier earlier which was the old uh, hms hermes which served india for long then we had uh, we, the present aircraft carrier what we have is ins vikramaditya which also came from abroad so the thought process was very strong in the navy and this thought process is again coming from the indian navy and especially among the among the three services the navy drove this right at the start but they felt that unless you actually design and engineer ships in india and to the extent possible the navy calls this by a different configuration the colloquial term they use is they say float power and uh, the fire part okay amongst which you know like they wanted indigenization in all the all the uh, aspects now this thought process being driven by the navy so they they wanted this they schemed this as a see it was not schemed as a indigenous aircraft carrier it was originally schemed as a air defense ship it was called an ads even when we started off you know? okay and then it actually became a full blown aircraft carrier today the complete basic design which happened at the indian navy design directorate in delhi the complete functional design detail engineering down to the last detail in cochin shipyard complete construction and when you are talking about equipment and systems 
Today we have coined the word Atmanirbhar, Atmanirbhar Radha, which was always there, but then uh, the Atmanirbhar Bharat cuts very strongly with us. You can say with confidence, this vessel from a value point of view is 76 percentage Atmanirbhar. And the confidence as you move forward into the next is this figure can be. And what are these 24 percentage? These are uh, the aviation flight complex as we call it because the planes are still not Indian. The Indian planes will also fly from this. The LCA will fly from this. But then there are other planes also that flies from this. So some of the a AFC components, large, that is the uh, thing which is there. There is a gas turbines which had the foreign component, but which has actually been implemented in India through Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. So see the great feel here is uh, when I talk Atmanurbar, see from Cochin Spirit, it gives me great pride. But it gives me even more greater pride talking as an Indian. <laughs> because, uh, see here, just look at the companies that's involved. Bharat Electronics Limited, BHEL, Tata Advanced Systems, Larson & Tubro, Kirloskar Oil Engines, uh, Kirloskar Pneumatics, the large scale, our, our Steel Authority of India Limited, the DRDO Labs, about a about hundred and odd MSMEs directly on this. So, there's a, there's a lot of Indian flavor that's come into it. So, this, uh, this whole... Trust on indigenization and this Atmanarbar part. And this ad was working on 24 to 7. This is See, uh, see, the initial part was the design and engineering part. Then, then it was in the fabrication stages. Okay. Okay. There were, there were when you came, there were blocks all over the shipyard. Then we launched the vessel in 2013. So from then onwards, the vessel is in water. Then we called various systems are put through the final outfitting test commissioning stage. And uh, we have on a given day, we have about 2005, you can see the kind of people that's coming in even yes, yes, now, yes, you know, right, like, right. Uh -huh. like uh, the, the kind of finishing works because uh, we need to now prepare the vessel for commissioning, you know. So we call it the clean ship just to get this clean because it's a mammoth place, you know. So the yard worked continuously on this. All these are uh, shipyard workers or they, or they, they are, are contract labor? No, it, it, it's, it's a combination. It's a combination of people. So we have turnkey people, we have people significantly from Kerala, we have people from other states. So again, again, this is an all India effort that's happening. What is the future of green shipping? Actually, you mentioned about green shipping uh, in your speech last day also. Uh, can you elaborate on the, that concept and also how a coaching shipyard is prepared? Uh, to emerge uh, into this new market? When it's coming to technology, when it's coming to engineering, it's all going to be about sustainability. So we call this green. Now, when you're talking about green in shipping, we need to understand like shipping is, you can have, for example, you're seeing boats here. So this is extremely near coastal. Then you'll have a little bit coastal. Then you'll have high sea. So if, if you roughly divide this into these three categories, each one will have a different challenge. For the near coastal, probably we move significantly into electrics so that you have charging either from the shore or by various other methods. Mm -hmm. For the mid levels, you will have various type of non-carbon, non-fossil fuels. And for the high sea shipping also, you will have various type of non, uh, less, less carbon uh, fuels. But this is non-reversible. Okay. This will move forward. It is only a matter of time. The advanced countries who can afford this because uh, this transition, there's a costly transition. Somebody has to take this cost yes. and this cost will have to be taken by the states, by the governments, by the country mm. because the returns are not business. The business returns are not commercial, the returns are economic in nature. Doing with your own technology? We are, we are certain things, uh, see, we may not be able to do all the technology. So we'll have to do technology adaption. To a large extent, see, we are today working on uh, building India's first truly indigenous fuel cell vessel, hydrogen fuel cell vessel. So the hydrogen fuel cell vessel, the technology, we are teamed up with a Indian tech major headquartered in Pune. We have various others involved and we are doing the complete integration. The ship part is being handled by us. There are other projects where we are involved where the technology is imported. But as we move forward, we'll see more and more. For example, you'll see batteries. There are, there are a lot of companies coming into the country. We will see more and more Indian companies coming. Cochin Shipyard is one of the largest PSU in Kerala. How have you changed the economy of the state and especially the Cochin city? We feel, see, we, uh, where we are now, there is a high level of confidence. Okay. Today, Cochin Shipyard is accepted from a technology point of view, from a 
trustworthy point of view. See, trust is very important. Ships are this big business. Now, you, you don't want to, to put your money and then not get something. This is from a commercial perspective. We have raised a level of trust over in Europe. Cochin Shipyard is today an accepted brand. We can actually do that. The numbers and other things, we feel we are at a tipping point. And we feel much more will come into Cochin. And it's not just Cochin. See, today we are doing two major expansion projects. Just happy to inform you that in Cochin, we are investing about 2,800 crores. So it's a massive investment. So we are actually believing in the capabilities, this, this odd feel which people had at least some time back that nothing much can be done in Kerala. I think we are exceptions. We, can, we, are, we are here to prove that unnecessary perception is wrong. But it's not just about Kerala. We are also expanding a little bit in other parts. So today we are seven units across uh, India and each one is going to be specialized. This shipyard in Kochi is going to be mainly for large to mid-sized vessels. But we will leverage the shipyard for smaller things to start off because that is where the confidence comes in and that's where the market will accept us. But once we leverage it, it will come out of, we have now two subsidiaries, one in Malpe near Udupi in Karnataka and the other one in Kolkata. So these will come out of those facilities. Ship repair, we are here in Kochi. We have our main base in Cochin Shipyard. International ship repair facility on the land released from Wellington, uh, Cochin Port Trust in Wellington Island. And three units now, Mumbai, Kolkata and Port Blair. So ship repair, we feel, we feel ship repair, India is eminently suited for India. India can actually be, ship repair is your, in civil aviation, we call the MRO in civil aviation, the maintenance, repairs and overhauls. Similarly, MRO in shipping. And we feel we can attract much more Indian tonnage, potential for foreign naval forces to be repairing in Kochi. So these are all things which you are looking for. Definitely everyone wants to know about the future business order of Kochi shipping. Yeah. We are, uh, we, are, we are today sitting generally good. But as CMD, I, huh. I, you, you want more, you want more because uh, because you, you want your aspirational uh, turnover targets multiplied by about four to five years because the gestation period in this business is a bit high. So today I have, uh, from the Navy, we have ASW Corvettes, eight numbers, which is about 6,500 crores. We are due to sign contracts for the next generation missile vessels, which will be another six vessels, which would be about... 10,000 crores and uh, there are other orders also which I may not be able to talk more on it but then from Europe we are we are sitting pretty close to orders we have picked up eight vessels from Germany this is a very major break for us small mid-sized coastal vessels but we have entered a niche segment in Germany which normally people can't enter these are these are all clannish businesses but uh, probably the trust we have our friends in Europe who have actually taken vessels from Cochin Shipyard. We have delivered more than uh, 45 ships into West Europe. And those ships are doing the talking for us. So we have recently secured these eight vessels from Germany. And uh, I can assure you there will be better news to come very, very shortly. This is a milestone. What will be the future of Cochin Shipyard after 25 years? I'm probably 25 years. I may not be able to uh, because, because uh, in business, the way technology changes, the way... Uh, Thoughts the change. concept of green shipping that you mentioned exactly. earlier. So all I can say is we will be a much more strong and knowledge company. We will be, see in the past also, when the requirements came, we were agile to catch the market. We think business. Let's be very clear. If we are a, we are a public sector unit, but it's very clear we think business. We are ready. We are ready for the fight in the open market. And we have done it. Last 30 years, we have done it. I can tell you, there's not been, people think that as a government company, you get grants from the government. We get a lot of goodwill. The goodwill is a grant we get from the government. The money is not pumped in by the government. But as we move forward, as a knowledge company, we will do good. We will be agile to catch the emerging trends in the market, as you rightly pointed out. The near 5 to 10 years, we are seeing significant traction coming on green uh, shipping advanced technologies, autonomy, autonomy in various forms, unmanned ships, people would say, do we need unmanned ships? 
and my answer is we may need unmanned ships not uh, not because we want to replace a human being there purely from the functional point of view certain things which a human being can't do the machine will do better and we will actually do you are probably you would have seen in the papers right, right, recently right. we delivered the yes, yes. first two autonomous vessels to norway they are talking because they have a shortage of people also but for us it could be from a functional point of view it would come in the defense space so we have set up a new division called the strategic and advanced solutions we want to transit very strongly into a knowledge based company and that transition again i feel is non reversible the fall of sri lanka or colombo will anyway benefit cochin ship here from ship repair point of view positive absolutely positive because there was one large uh, shipyard in colombo which has been it's a very good shipyard and they do very well and cochin shipyard and that shipyard is comparable in various ways and uh, many a times we can say we are head and head competitors so when while i i wouldn't cherish what is happening over there but from a pure business point of view wouldn't mind <laughs> okay thank you thank you very much thank you